What's going on, people of the internet? Welcome back to another episode of the Waveform Podcast. We're your hosts. I'm Marquez. I'm Andrew. And I'm David. And today, we're going to start it off by unpacking Samsung's packed, unpacked event 2022. Thank you for the pun, David. (laughs) I didn't think I'd get through that without breaking down, but I I got through it. I'm impressed. (laughs) It's the beginning of our busy season too, though. So that's sort of how we think about these Samsung announcements, but we'll talk through them. There's some good phones and a watch or two watches. And then we, uh, we're we gonna sort of revisit the beginning of our year, which in which we made a bunch of predictions about how the smartphone year might go and see how accurate we think we were. Maybe we're still on track. Maybe some of it's been thrown off. I will just throw a spoiler in here. I already have a, a compact smartphone of the year, uh, easy front runner. Mm-hmm. You guys probably already know what that is. but. Without any further ado, let's just start with the event. Let's start with Unpacked. Um, kind of, we we're saying the word packed is what we're going to use because we did get a bunch of stuff. There were uh, two phones. Two phones. Two <laughs> watches <laughs> and a pair of headphones. Where should we start? Um, I guess we start on the phones unless people want to mm-hmm. wait till the end. <laughs> Save the best for last. I think the yeah. phones, I mean, the phones are actually pretty simple. Yeah. Uh, so let's just do the phones. Okay. Two phones. Flip four and fold four. My summary is Flip 4 and Fold 4, which both start at the same price as last year's model, are incremental refinement type upgrades from the Flip 3 and Fold 3. Uh, I think the biggest improvement to the Flip is going to be battery life. We have yet to test these, so this is just my prediction, but it's getting a Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1, and it's going from a 3400 to a 3700 milliamp hour battery. So for a small phone- Is there 300? Either way, it's it's getting yeah. a bump yeah. to 3700. So yeah. it should be a nice usability improvement. I've used other phones with Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1s, and they've had pretty great efficiency, so I'm looking forward to testing that. Mm-hmm. And then the biggest improvement, or at least change with the Fold 4, to me seems to be, I mean, it's a lot of minor things. It's three millimeters wider on the front cover screen. It's got some slightly thinner bezels on the inside. It also has a Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 and the same size battery as last year, but it also has a second generation under display selfie camera. And that camera to me, we actually have another phone in the studio that Mm -hmm. has the second generation under display selfie camera. And we haven't made a video about it yet, but we've tested it. And the, the amount of times you actually notice the camera under the screen is way less. Mm -hmm. It looks much better. There isn't any pixelation when you drag things over the display. It looks really good. But the pictures that come out of it uh, look the same at best, sometimes worse. Do you remember when we put the, uh, I think it was the OnePlus 7 Pro underwater with the pop-up selfie camera and it came out? I I do. I feel like it's hazed over (laughs) like like that before the phone totally broke. It kind of is what it looks like, Yeah. yeah. It sort of has like a dehaze effect that applies afterwards and you can see it go from being very hazy to processing and then applying. Yeah, it's funny how dramatic it is. You can see it happen in the the impressions video. We have a clip of it and it like snaps into being processed. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Video calls are going to be kind of hazy. (laughs) I'm very concerned about how video calls will look on that phone. Yeah. Which is funny because that's the phone you want to do video calls on and you want to take a conference call and like set it up like a little mini laptop and all that stuff. So... Yeah, that that's the phones. I don't know. Do you guys have any thoughts on them being incremental upgrades? It seems like though they did like one kind of cool feature for both of them, which was they made the flip for the front screen more customizable, right? And I think like the biggest increment from flip one to flip two was like actually making that front screen usable and having some things in it. So that feels kind of cool. And then in terms of the fold four, like you said, it's very incremental. It seems much more polished and and the form factor feels better, that mm-hmm. outside like screen. But then also this is the first one shipping with 12L, Android 12L, which is right. like the uh, Android for larger screens, For foldables, right? yeah. Yeah, and so yeah. you have like dock on the bottom, which there's a lot of new, or there should be a lot of new features to make that inside screen yeah. feel hopefully much smoother. And I think the dock's pretty sweet. The dock looks really cool. Like yeah. it makes total sense. Yeah, it just lives at the bottom and just has whatever recent apps you've used and whatever favorite apps you want to keep down there. And then you just like swap back and forth between apps super yeah. fast. I wonder if I switch to navigation gestures, how that will work. Because when I use it in the impressions event, it was with the button navigation. Yeah. And so they put the buttons over to the side and then the dock was in the middle. But I typically immediately switch Samsung phones and every phone to gesture navigation. So if that's at the bottom, 
then where does the dot go? Like right above that? Probably underneath it. Should be interesting. You're to see. saying yeah, that probably the, underneath the, it because you'd have to swipe anyway. So if you're swiping from the very bottom versus like tapping on the dock, I feel yeah. like it would be able to. Well, you're saying if you added the old three bar navigation, right? No, then it where currently, would it, it currently, it currently has, has that. It has it when really? I tried really? it. Dock, yeah. yeah. So by default, three bar navigation. They put the three buttons all the way in the corner, oh. and they put the dock in the middle of the bottom. My thought is, isn't the middle of the bottom usually where you swipe up to do go home and multitask? Yeah. So if I try to switch to gesture navigation, where does the dock go? Sounds like it'll just sit it right above. on top. That's just my guess. But what, okay. did, yeah. what did the Fold 3 do? It still had gesture navigation, right? Or yes, but it didn't have that dock, I guess. It just it almost sounds like they brought back the three buttons onto the dock. I, I can only assume it still has gesture navigation and yeah. it's just also yeah, going no to be it. there. I mean, that's yeah, the first that thing be, I'm going to try. Yeah. 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 I'm really interested in kind of holding the Fold 4 and comparing it to the feeling of the Fold 3 because the fa of the fact that they changed the aspect ratio slightly. Like both phones have a 6.2 inch display on the front, but I'm imagining that the slightly wider phone is going to feel more like a regular phone. Um, I think that a lot of reasons that people really liked the Oppo Find N or maybe like some of the Huawei phones is because the aspect ratio feels more like you're holding a regular phone and the folds have always felt like a candy bar, especially the original one. But over the years, like they covered the screen, the front with a screen, but it's still so narrow. So even the slight change where they like shrunk it slightly and then moved that height to the side so that it has the same um, same width and not width. Like uh, pixel density? Yeah, it's, it's mm -hmm. the same 6.2 inches diagonally. Yeah. Okay. It's just a very slightly different aspect. I do here. think it's really, really subtle. But it's it's very subtle when you look at it. But I agree when I you feel hold it. it, I'm sure it's going to be far different because you talk about the Oppo Find N. People liked it more. They thought this was too tall. Yeah. Then think about also the Duo feels way too thick. Like yeah, there's something about we're used to holding a phone, and the closer we can get to that normal phone, normal and, phone. And so you add that little change with end height, and you also add this smaller uh, yeah. hinge now. It right, looks so too. much more yeah, like when you look grippable. next to them, it's easy to look online and say like, that's so much little of a difference, but yeah. in hand, I bet it feels totally different. So I only had the phone for like an hour for mm -hmm. my impressions and I didn't get to hold it next to the old phone, but in hand, as I just looked at it, it looked like a very tall rectangle like the old ones usually do. Yeah. But that is one thing you can say about Samsung's like fold upgrades year over year is something stay the same. The camera systems are, are similar usually every year. The battery is just the same from last year. But the one thing that they always do is they make the outside screen a little bit better to use mm -hmm. as your normal phone so that you don't have to open it. And that's sort of the big advantage of the fold over the flip is you, you could just use it like a normal phone and never even open it and you're fine. Uh, but yeah, I think just, just a small, subtle, I think the find N is a much bigger difference. Mm -hmm. I think that's a pretty dramatic, relatively speaking difference in aspect ratio versus this three millimeter wider versus yeah. the old fold. It's but stepping we'll closer. It's would, would you yeah. prefer find N over from what you held with the fold for? Hmm. It's a good question. They're it's, very similar. I think I would prefer the fold four. Slightly because I like the inside screen better. I, th okay. I thought the inside screen of the Find N was not big enough. If, if you were going, okay, when you unfolded it, okay. Yeah. I think it's the yeah. question of like, do you want a big phone or do you want a small phone? It's sort of the same idea because when the Find N is closed, it is pretty small. small. Yeah, it almost looks like a yeah. Zen phone size. It's the or Fold something. and the Fold Pro Max. <laughs> yeah. <There we> <laughs> So um, give Samsung any ideas, please. Yeah. yeah. Two prices on both of these. We have $1,000. They basically didn't Same change, price. right? Yeah. Same, Same prices price. as last time. The battery didn't change on the Fold 4. Like, it really is refinement, Yeah, like you said. It's very rare that in smartphones we get phones that year over year look almost exactly the same. Every single year they're at least slightly different. Samsung has slowly transformed their, their lineup. Like, Yeah. In Samsung world, I feel like it's pretty common for them to just change things all the time. Mm -hmm. Like we're used to like Apple going, yeah, that this is the S year. It's going to look the same. Mm -hmm. You just have to just see the S badge on the back. But yeah, in Samsung world, that's a little less common. So whether it's changing materials on the back, this one looks like the same satin as last year, or if it's changing camera layouts or whatever it is, 
they didn't really do too much of that this year. They're just like, yeah, settling in. Yeah. They I guess they do it more than other manufacturers. Like the S20 yeah. to 21 to 22 all look more similar than most other phone manufacturers do. But they always change something yeah, about it. I think like for their regular phones, they need to like have something a little different to cause a little more hype where this is still a folding phone with an under display finger or a selfie camera. It's like, it's pretty wow factor already. So they don't have to do as much, but like the S21 looked so good. And then the S22 ultra, they're like, let's just screw it up a little bit. So it looks different. <laughs> yeah. They're like, they do yeah. change it, but they don't change it. It's, yeah. it's confusing, but I like that they're keeping this They're I like that they're refining this because this yeah. is, this is a new form factor that they have to refine because yeah. it hasn't quite. Yeah. yeah. This is, I've, I've been thinking about like, if this is a whole video that I want to make or not, but sort of what's ha like the, the state of foldables basically, mm -hmm. because we've, we had the first generation where we got, Oh, this is a cool idea. It folds in half. Okay. Now what are they going to do better? And the first to second generation jump was okay. We get to see what we've learned about these foldables and what we actually want to make better. And for the fold, it was like, we made the outside screen way bigger so you can use it more as a regular phone. Yeah. We learned all these things about durability. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so mm -hmm. those well, are things. Yeah. Right, right. So we got all these big changes. We got generation three, smaller changes, generation four, even smaller changes. And now we're just sort of like set on like what a Galaxy Fold is. Same thing with the flip. Like we had a tiny screen and then we want like more information on the outside screen. So that got bigger. And then the next one was pretty close. Was there no screen on the first flip? It was very small. It was really small. Was it, okay. it was like, it showed it like you like LED? the time. Yeah, it showed you the yeah. time and it could show you little notification badges. Okay, so it was like dot pixel or whatever. Uh, dot it was an actual LCD It was a display. screen, it was? but it wasn't yeah. very useful. Okay. And then immediately Samsung and everybody using them realized, oh, we still want to be able to just gl glance yeah. at the phone. Like when my phone buzzes and I look at the phone and I just don't know what's going on and I yeah. have to open it, okay, we want a little bit more functionality on the outside. So we got a bigger screen on the outside. Yeah. And now Samsung's settled in. Yeah. Like it just looks the way it looks. And then you look at the rest of the foldables out there and they're kind of settling into the same form factors. Yeah. And I just wonder what that says about where we are in foldables. Is it like we we want we want things to fold in half and be practical, but are we out of ideas already? We, didn't we just see all these trifold yeah. TCL concept phones and all these other interesting ideas that might not have a spot yet, but may be doable in the future. I don't know. But it seems like we have like two or maybe three total versions of a folding phone that you could buy. I think with how many other companies are seeing coming out with them, like we, Razer just announced they're redoing, they're doing their Razer 3, yeah, the Razer right? 3. Then um, was it Wow? No, Xiaomi just released. Xiaomi, they're yeah. doing one, I it's believe. It's the... Um, the Mi Fold 2. Me, okay. Yeah, yeah. Like we're seeing a lot of other companies doing these. Okay. You know what's funny about those two phones you just mentioned? They're the same. Form <laughs> yeah. They're the same. The Razer <laughs> the 3 is a flip. Remember the Razer looked like kind of different. Like yeah. it had this sort of retro vibes and it looked like that old Moto phone we remember from a long time ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The Razer 3, they've gone, hey, okay. It turns out you want a big screen and you want it to be flattened up. Here's a flip three. Yeah, it looks more. It looks way more like a flip three. Like when it's opened, I'll pull it up for you, Andrew. I think I looked at it earlier. Yeah, it. It's funny because when it's opened, it almost looks the back like, still looks more like a razor, but that could almost be like just a color way or a skin. Yeah, two tone. And then you look at yeah. the inside, and it looks like a wider flip. Yeah, three. yeah, it does. Which yeah. at least it's wider, I guess. It's funny. It definitely is like ditching the nostalgia aspect of the razor yeah, with that like have slim this, for yeah. yeah the really slim top yeah, part yeah. that is very iconic. Which is fun. I think everyone's given they they realized the nostalgia wasn't selling that yeah, thing. Yeah, I'm guessing it didn't sell super well. But, but the other one too, the Xiaomi Fold Two, yeah, me, the Mix Fold Two also looks very similar to a fold. Yeah. Uh, just thinner. Yeah, yeah, I think basically. the, but then there is the like XS, the the Huawei Mate XS, so that's XS2, the third one. which yeah. is different style. It's and like I think the, my oh, argument oh. is that one might die. Yeah. So if, I, if I were to pick one to die, it would be that. I think. <laughs> well, sorry, if I were to guess one would die, it would be that. I'm not picking it to yeah, die. You can, yeah, yeah. you can always pick one. <laughs> no, that's the one where you fold it around the outside. It would be the most fun to break. Ugh, it's the easiest, break, it's the easiest to break is my the easiest to scratch yeah, yeah. It's I, scary i think it'd be interesting like think back to when this first samsung fold came out like we were all pretty Pain. well okay Pain. let's say the 1.5 samsung fold sure, came out sure. um oh, yeah. like when that came out what 3 years ago now 4 
did you think at this point, like we would be this far along, like we would only be, we would be refining at this point. We wouldn't still be, or did you think we would still be in this very prototypey feeling like no chance you ever see this? Cause I've seen a couple folds in the wild. Like they're out there and they're out there. I wouldn't have guessed that quickly. I think Samsung, because they're the only one like in the U S making foldable phones besides like the Motorola razor, mm -hmm. um, which they didn't make a three of this year. I think it's coming out next year in the U S so it, nothing even shipped in 2022 yeah, from it's like China them. only. It's China only for a yeah. bit. It'll come out in the U S eventually. I think Samsung is like way, way, way ahead of everybody else yeah. at this point. And I see folds and flips more flips than folds, but I, I saw like a 65 year old dude, with a fold in my cafe the other day. And I was like, nice, you rock sick. But at this point they're like four years ahead. So I think that most companies look at the entire landscape with a safety measure in mind. And it's clear that the small that becomes big idea is a safe idea at this point. And you can either do yeah. really small that becomes big or yeah. regular that becomes bigger. And those have proven themselves and nobody else wants to be like the trifold one that has no idea if anyone's going to buy it. Yeah. yeah. I think the two basic concepts are small that becomes big or big that becomes small. So like small that becomes big is you're using a small phone, but or you regular. want this crazy tablet thing in your yeah. pocket. That's the fold. And the other idea is you have a normal phone, or like a sort of a big phone and you want it to be smaller in your pocket mm -hmm. when you put it away. And that's the flip idea. Yeah. Um, I think we're still, it's the jury's still out on if we're gonna see like a pixel fold yeah. or an Apple folding phone or someone else might be jumping in eventually someday. But to your question about like, you know, once we saw the first gen, how long did we think it would be till yeah. it stagnated maybe? I also oh, look right. at the other big like phone form factors. Like I think four generations in is when we got a nice holding point. When you look at Galaxy S one, two, three, and then four, Galaxy S four was like, oh, the identity is set. It's a smooth Android phone with Samsung software and an OLED display and like flagship spec. And like iPhone four was like square edges, home button, small screen iOS phone. Like you got that identity with iPhone four. And oh, that's then it was Pixel 4. Phone, Pixel 4? I'm just kidding. Uh, I don't know about <laughs> no, Pixel 4. I'm just kidding. Not a no, very I'm strong Google, legacy. Like Google, Google had a really strong identity with Pixel up until the 6. Actually, until uh, the 5. You mean Nexus? Well, yeah, yeah it'd be kind of weird because, Pixel, like, Nexus. Especially the Pixel 2 through 4 felt like a cohesive oh, family. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But then it true, the shit. when they got to the 5, yeah. they were like, we're going to make it cheap and just it's just going to be plastic. And then the 6 is like, hello, yeah. I'm here. Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. now it just looks like an alien or whatever. But Interesting. Yeah, we fold, could. right? I think, fold. yeah, fold, you know, four generations in. We, we, know, we know what we have. Yeah. But I think there could be some stuff on the horizon that's way more interesting. I really want to see a company come out and just make something that none of us are even thinking of. Like that we haven't even thought of before. TCL. I, yeah. Well, yeah. But the, yeah. that's, that's the problem is that they, they like prototype things and they get people excited and they're just like, and this is why we scrapped it. And they're just True. like, okay, but I just want to use it. I mean, that's what, Come there on. was like Vivo for a while that felt like they were the ones yeah. doing that with like the fingerprint scanner and everything. And they, they walked so everyone else could run. And, Vivo has you know, done that for a lot of stuff. Yeah. yeah. They stuff, always felt, display. they felt like the prototype company for like yeah. a while. But, However, but, I did go to China for a Vivo event where they had no buttons or ports on a phone. And I'm just like, please don't do this. Stop, <laughs> stop Vivo. You can stop now. Thanks. Whatever you're doing there. Please stop. Yeah. Um, yeah. I do think I'm excited for someone to come out with something we've never seen before, but I'm kind of excited we're hitting a stagnant point because that means they're doing a good job on something already and mm -hmm. that it's hitting a stride probably. And they're, they're like, okay, we don't need to make drastic changes on this because it's working. Yeah. Um, I think the biggest thing next will be starting to get the price down because $1,800 yeah. on a that's phone what is what I was insane. Okay, that's what I was hoping would be the thing because yeah, remember when yeah. the flip finally got to nine ninety nine, and we're like, oh, yeah. what's going to happen is we're going to have these folding phones and they might not get like dramatically better, but the price will slowly get down so that it's alongside all the other phones you yeah. can buy yeah. and you can just pick the one that folds instead of the one that doesn't fold. And nine ninety nine is like the very highest end of that. There's lots of really good phones for nine ninety nine, but the fold is still seventeen ninety nine. Yeah, which Way too in the much. U.S. you know people you know, get a contract and they'll pay thirty five dollars a month or whatever it is, but it's so much money compared yeah. to what you could get for seventeen ninety nine. Yeah. You could get two 
of the best phones. I think yeah, the reason that I see flips a lot is imagine you walk into a carrier store and there are multiple flagships that are all ninety nine nine ninety nine, and you're a regular person, and one of them folds in half. Yeah, it's yeah that's like cool it's for everybody, right? It's kind of like, cool. It's cool for everyone, and it's still got flagship specs. Do you think it feels risky? If you go into a flagship store and you're like, oh, there's a 999 iPhone. Oh, there's a 999 Pixel. There's a 999, you know, S22. And then there's a folding one. Maybe it did for the first two generations, but I feel like I've seen a lot of flip threes. And maybe it's just because enough time has gone by where people have gotten used to seeing them in the carrier store. I I think there's also a lot of people who just, who don't use iPhone and Samsung's generally that default. So they're like, I want a Samsung. I'm choosing between two Samsungs. This one folds. folds. Yeah. Like a Galaxy S21 Plus or a folding Galaxy yeah. S21 Plus. <laughs> I'll take the folding. I'll take the folding one. I'll it's take cool. Yeah. yeah. And your friends are always like, "Wow, that's interesting." You know? True. Talking point. Talking. Don't point. underestimate the va- the be- the value it's of like a talking the Rivian point. yesterday, <laughs> dude. We'll we'll talk about that eventually, but yeah. I'll I'll say it now. I said it in the video actually. Mm-hmm. I have never. I'm I'm we're we're using this Rivian truck, right? I have never, in any of the cars we've tested, had more people like wave me down, ask me about the thing. In the McLarens, in the in the supercars, in the other trucks, and the electric stuff we've tested, none have come close to the Rivian. The Rivian is the most attention grabbing vehicle I've ever driven by a lot. Yeah, I'd it's ask crazy. about the Rimac, but we weren't a lot of the parking we, lot yeah. with it. <laughs> yeah. But even the Rimac kind of just looks like an R8 from a, if you yeah. squint. Well, like, it's just really it's like a RC so car. Times yeah. the height of it. Yeah, <laughs> it's like a little sports car. I guess if you pulled up in a like a grocery store parking lot, people would be like, "What is that noise? What are you making? putting in there? Like, <laughs> what is happening fit in the car?" But it is definitely yeah. yeah the Rimac's going crazy. But we'll we'll talk about it another day. Yeah, uh, I want to. Cool. Also, just mention the recyclable materials. Yes. Because that is, oh, it's a, it's a good note. And it, it's sort of a question mark in the way it's being presented versus the actual facts. Because I haven't dug into it, but basically the way Samsung presents it is they are taking fishing nets out of the ocean and using that plastic in the plastics in the phone. Cool. Great. Keep doing that, please. And inspire others to do that because I mm-hmm. hate fishing nets. Do you know, <laughs> we were talking about this I think the best green thing that Samsung does is have like one of the best trade-in programs ever. <laughs> That's like, also really good. I idea. really, really appreciate that, that they they do have really, really good trade-in deals. We were talking about, it feels like you can almost get a new phone for like free at this point. You I think Samsung's in. like, please trade it in so your battery doesn't start swelling and we realize uh, that. Okay, you, maybe, yeah. yeah, but let's uh, <laughs> Yo, yeah, that's yeah, true. get the old Samsung's <laughs> out true. the streets. All right. It's every Samsung. I retract phone. everything I just said. No, it's let's good. Well, it's a good thing. I don't <laughs> yeah. want grenades in our, <laughs> in our closets. <laughs> All right, let's go to trivia before we get sued. Yeah, it's yeah. real. I'll just, you know we yeah. have the smartphone closet. Actually, mm. who else just tweeted recently? They had Samsung. It was Sarah, Arun, right? Uh, I thought Saf Arun. may have Saf or Arun yeah, or both yeah. probably. Just if you keep a Samsung phone long enough, the the odds are much higher with a Samsung yeah. phone that you'll find it swollen, especially during the summer. I remember uh, I had a studio with Michael Fisher and David Kogan like a couple years ago. We all had a studio together, and but there's a lot of old phones in there. There was a lot of Samsung phones in there, and I went in during a summer day one time, and Michael had this like rack of phones, and it was a like a Note five and a Note eight and a S. 20 or something and it was only the samsung phones that, that literally the batteries were popping well it's yeah. crazy i don't know how it was bad only samsung phones yeah well anyway <laughs> recycle your phones folks yeah. that's how you get, a, get ahead of that yeah uh we're gonna talk about the watch and the watch pro after the break but before we get there let's get to trivia trivia yeah <laughs> <laughs> Right. Oh, I forgot to record. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. All right. It's time <laughs> for trivia. Adam is gone this week. It's just me, which means hard questions. Oh, only. <laughs> Nobody to rain Ellis in on these. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No one to check me. Um, all right. First question. Who owns ARM? And it's not a person. Okay, I was going to say, so it's a company who owns ARM. Okay. Wait. Oh, yeah, I know this one. What company owns ARM? Ha. All right. Ha. Ha. Cool. Says and we're also doing uh, our point system when we come back is David has points, but he hasn't been on as many episodes of trivia, so we're doing points per game. Oh. We're still working out Maybe. a lot of things. Yeah. Maybe. Theoretically. I 
have how many points David has written in front of me. I think it's tied with me. I don't have how many games we've played written in oh. front of me. Well, well, oh. well, it's only one, I think. Or no, two. Is it two? It's like done? two and a half. Since we reset. Andrew was gone one week. We'll, we'll figure this all out. I don't know. In a, in a, in a, <laughs> through the magic of yeah. video editing, yeah. we'll figure this all out later. <laughs> Which I'm editing, so I guess, yeah. <laughs> I guess I'll Good figure it out Good luck with the stories. Yeah. <laughs> in, yeah, we'll okay. be back after the break. Okay, welcome back. So Samsung Unpacked is more than just the phones, of course. I actually low-key think that the things that weren't the phones were the most interesting announcements. So we got the two phones out the way. What we also had was the Samsung headphones, which were, I'll just say they were uh, the new Samsung Buds Pro, active noise cancellation, slightly new design, much better quality focus. I haven't gotten a chance to handle them or listen to them, so we just have to fully wait until we get to use them. But we also got two new watches, Watch 5 and Watch 5 Pro. Galaxy Watch 5, Galaxy Watch 5 Pro. This is interesting to me for a lot of reasons. You've been testing, you've been using yeah. one of the Galaxy Watches, so, right? So funny, funny story. I have the Watch 4 right here, the regular Watch 4, not the Watch 4 Classic. Mm -hmm. I've been using it for like four or five months and we were like, I wrote a script for a bitrate for the studio channel and we were shooting, like <laughs> Hayato and I were setting it up and David like messaged me on Slack like, hey, we're in the briefing right now. They're announcing the Watch 5. And I was like, mm. Yeah. <laughs> I okay, like, I guess we won't do this. Yeah, this is the life um, of a reviewer. So it yeah. will. We will be looking at that. I'm very excited though because I've been using this watch a lot and I really, really like it. I have two main gripes with it. One Perfect. is a terrible bug with it right now, where if it loses connection with your phone, you have to reset the entire watch and lose all of your data. Oh my! God. To reset it back in, unless you did a backup. If it but I, I have it right now. I. I can show you on my phone if I go to... If it loses connection as if you, like, leave the if, house without your watch. If it, like, somehow the, the Bluetooth connection has to be, like, reconnected, mm. essentially. Like I don't, like, I can go away from it and come back, but if it ever, like, blips in that... Mm. And this is something... There's a Reddit thread I found that's nine months old, and people still to this week are commenting, like, oh I just gosh. had this problem. How do I fix wow. it? That sounds, like a sounds big, big problem. more like a lack of a feature than a bug. Mm. Yeah, so if I go into my Galaxy wearable right now, looking for it doesn't show it. Uh oh. Yeah, it's in airplane mode. Still should show. Is your Bluetooth on? It is. You better go catch it. Oh, this might not be on. Anyways, it it I'll try and reconnect it, and it'll just say um, it'll say. We found it in order to add a new device. You need to reset the device from your watch. And then on your watch, it'll say, do you want to reset this? That's really and bad. It's awful. Yeah. Um, but other than that, my biggest gripe is battery life. Um, mm, interesting. The battery life on this is terrible. I, I would say I'm okay with it because I don't use sleep tracking, so I can charge it every night. But it will not last two days. And I've seen that. So a how, lot of other people with that that same that's issue. That's what I was going to say. So how bad is terrible? Because I've been an Apple Watch person for the better part of like you, four or five years. You'd call that a two-day battery life, right? I would call it a one and a half day battery life. Yeah. Very specifically. I because exactly I cannot get to the end of two days, yeah. but I can always get past one day. Yes. This yeah. can get past one day. If you use sleep tracking, I would say by the time you wake up, you're under 40%. Okay. And like... I would not expect it to last um, more than that. Like this would never last a weekend as far okay, as I fair. use it. Um, so you'll be happy to know <laughs> yeah. one of the new features anyway. of the Watch 5 is it has a larger battery, 15% larger battery, I believe. And the other gripe, the other way to get around bad battery life is faster charging. Mm -hmm. And this does have fast charging. Um, specifically, what do we have? 13% larger battery on the Watch 5. And uh, the Watch 5 Pro we'll get to in a second, but... Yes. I think that should at least help with the battery life. It should. Uh, we'll see. We'll get it in hand. I think we'll if you're it. someone who does a lot of things during the day and also wants to sleep track, you're going to have to find that perfect time. Maybe the fast charging will help, so you could do it maybe yeah. while you're showering or it, something it like really that. It really becomes a habit of like you know when you end the day, you look at your percentage and you're like, this won't make it through the night or this will. With yeah. the Apple Watch, it's like 25%. Uh I know if I go to bed anywhere around 30 that I just need to find time to charge before I put it back on. I hate that. Just, yeah, just it drives me part, of the, part of the downside. The design is very similar, but it does have sapphire glass now on the outside, That's which good. is much better. I love this design. 
I think this design looks good. And the sapphire glass, which is stronger. I tested three watches. This is the only watch where the screen didn't crack or chip when I was rock climbing. My Apple watch has a big chunk taken out of it. Yours does as well. The screen? Um, It's not a chunk. It's more of like Yours is like a crack. Tim's has like a chunk. I have multiple stars. Actually, I do have a little chunk. But that's that's the metal or the screen? The, the bolt, uh, the screen. His screen, the screen has screen, like a actually. bunch of really? scratches on the top down and here. bottom. But it, rock climbing holds are so coarse that they it's, will just destroy. But if you look at stuff. mine, the outside edge of it got really scratched. But oh, yeah, the, yeah. the, the glass, glass didn't get okay. touched at all. Maybe because it's flat. Well, Maybe. it's going to get even stronger. So I have a I have a Garmin Venue too, which I love, and it got really messed up climbing. Those it are the has ones like I expect re- to be super strong. Yeah. I, I agree with you. Um, one thing about these though is I debated using the Watch Classic because of the dial has a little more of a lip, but I didn't really love the spinny part in that. This Galaxy Watch Five Pro has that new lip and okay. doesn't have the thickness of. Let's some talk of the about other the things. Watch Five Pro. Yeah, mm-hmm. let's I'm, talk about. The I'm Pro. really excited for that. So one. the Five is great, but the Pro. Well, first of all, I guess we could speak about this at any point, but there are lots of rumors that we might see an Apple Watch Pro, yeah. and I think Samsung has a tendency to go. They're going to do what? Okay, trust yeah. me, we're on yeah. that. We'll yeah. beat them to that, trust we, me. We got it. So we got the Watch 5 Pro. The Watch 5 Pro is a larger, thicker, stronger, more activity-focused version of the Watch 5. So it's, think like GPS-related stuff, much longer battery life. It's a 60% larger battery life. Yes. And it also has a thicker, I believe it's thicker. They say stronger sapphire glass on the outside. I don't know how you have different strength levels other than just making it thicker. It's probably thicker. So yeah. it's it's stronger, probably thicker sapphire glass on the outside, and it's also inlet or inset underneath a bezel. So you have a little bit of protection there for the glass. Yeah. It seems if you can deal with the larger size, it's a forty-five millimeter size only. Yeah. Yes. To be like the best version of what Samsung could make as far as a smartwatch that has a long battery life and actually deals with like heavy long GPS loads. Maybe you're gonna go. I heard there was a actually a golf version of this watch, but if there you're going to go yeah. like play golf with just your watch, there are GPS apps that will tell you for the entire four hour round of golf exactly how far you are from all of your your targets and, and the bunkers and the hazards and everything. Uh, biking, hiking, just going for a run, all that sort of stuff. This seems like the way to go for that stuff. So Watch 5 Pro is real. Did, uh, um, did we get it? confirmed that the golf version is real it's in the notes that they sent us it is a golf yeah. version yeah okay. it's all it is is they never they told didn't me bring it up at the yeah, briefing yeah, yeah. yeah. and then it's, someone um, told me about it and i was like what are you talking I about i think yeah. that we don't have to put this part in but <clears throat> i think it's it's 329 i think it's more like the regular one wait the five pro golf version it's is just the five golf version i don't oh, think it's five. the five pro oh, i think okay. it's the regular five all it is is custom watch faces a free lifetime subscription to caddy smart caddy like app caddy or something app. and it has a a different watch band a two oh, watch band okay so, so that's not it's all it's more like a what's the it's just like a brand partnership thing. yeah it's a, oh. it's is it pga branded uh no i think it's just a they're caddy. probably just L-I-V partnered with that app liv <laughs> no <laughs> L-I-V? That's a, that's a oh my God. no you can't even use gps for the golf tour. fans here yeah, well, that was a good reference. Yeah. <laughs> but like, no, uh, <laughs> no, it's just a, probably just the Caddy app. That's it's, it. Yeah, it's basically Fun. the Caddy app for yeah. an extra 30 bucks, it seems like, and and uh, limited watch faces with it. And a different band. And a different band. Okay, yeah. well. It's guess, more of a limited edition thing. Are you yeah. interested in that? No, because I could just turn the Watch yeah, 5 just, into the Golf Edition. Just buy yeah, the app time. with the Watch 5 Pro and then get way better battery life. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm really excited for the Watch 5 Pro because I I love hiking and stuff like that. I like outdoor stuff. And when I was using my Garmin, like, it's incredible for for really long hikes and stuff. It's got great GPS. All the different apps for it are fantastic. But wearing it every day, it just felt clunky. And the, like, the Watch 4 is so much nicer. So to have, in my mind, and we'll see how they execute it, but to have a Watch 4 that feels more like Garmin activity Mm -hmm. ruggedness with it, that's really really exciting for me i I think we talked about this in the foldable space earlier about things like finally coming to the point where they feel like very cohesive products but Mm -hmm. i feel like we're in a little bit of a wearables renaissance or golden age right now when it comes to both smart watches and then also earbuds because the earbuds have anc now it seems like you can get a ton of different earbuds with anc and it just depends on what company you want there's the pixel buds pro they have anc now yeah just like pick your company and then the other thing was when apple announced all of the additions to the apple watch tracking 
whether it was like tracking the little micro movements of your run and your your stride height and all these things. And now there's possibly going to be a pro watch and then there's going to be a pro version of this. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it seems like this this wearable tech is getting really good now. I agree. It's it's kind of amazing looking back what all of them do. Like you mentioned, the watch tracks all these things. It has a slightly different shape with the bottom of the watch. It's a little bit flatter so that it has more contact area on your wrist so that your blood oxygen levels and your all, all the things that's tracking can be even more accurate. It's like, mm-hmm. that's amazing. Yeah, it's Half the stuff I didn't ever think I'd need to know about myself, but yeah. here we are. And also true, like back in the day, I remember in like 2013, 2015, the Jaybird earbuds that I love so much, like to picture something that small having active noise cancellation, I was like, never. No way. Of course not. Yeah. But now, yeah, Pixel Buds Pro come out. It's like the exact same size, no wire, long battery life, popping your ears, active noise cancellation, and transparency mode. It's not that good, but it's still got it. <laughs> yeah. So that's that's yeah. pretty impressive. I have a question though. Yes. About the Watch 5 Pro. Do you think now, let's say it has a one and a half times longer battery life. Is that enough for you to say it's not terrible? Here's, here's, <laughs> I wow. w- listen. So the, the venue two, I, it's like an eight day battery life and I tried that and it works and I'm still kind of confused how that can have eight days and this can have a day and a half. Describe the functionality of that watch. I mean, it still has notifications. It still has like my calendar comes into it. My text messages come into it, it tracks steps, it tracks heart rate, all that stuff. Like it's constantly tracking, but generally when I'm using it, it's on a long trip somewhere where it's, it's also uh, like I was hiking eight hours a day and like I wasn't plugging it at all. It was crazy. Eight so, day battery. I is mean, it, clearly the screen is not as good, but still, what, like we're talking about a this the yeah. Watch Four is like four fifty by four fifty. It's not anything wild, and it is getting a fifth or a sixth of the battery life. That's so the cr- screen is always the screen and processor are always going to be the biggest draws of power. And I haven't used this eight day watch battery mm-hmm. life, but when I picture a one and a half day battery life watch having a 60 FPS OLED display that gets bright outdoors and is like very responsive and feels like a tiny smartphone on your wrist. I picture an eight day smartphone battery life being like on the Kindle end of the spectrum where you you don't really spend any time interacting with it. It just shows you stuff and that's good enough. Is that accurate? I don't think I use, I don't think I use my watches, both of them that much differently though. I I don't know. Then, Then that's better for you. Then it's to better the for me, one. but the thing is, is I still use the watch for the same way and don't use it as much and mostly use it to just check the time and some yeah. notifications yeah. and it's still only getting a day right. and a yeah. half. Like it, it's like not as efficient. It, it, there's, I'm sure there's some things. I think what you're talking about, you mentioned it the other day when we were talking about it is probably Android Wear OS versus whatever the Garmin stuff is. Yeah. That's probably doing far, far less, yeah. but that's still a huge gap that baffles me a little bit well when you're based on android though it's like there's it's so complex yeah like here's an analogy right the entire reason that arm devices have such like insane battery life comparatively is that you had x86 for this long period of time that had to do all of these functions Mm -hmm. and the more that pcs could do over time the more that architecture had to be able to be built out to handle but that also made it have more processes going on at the same time, and it just made it such a battery hog. So ARM, which is Advanced Risk Machines, it, it's a reduced architecture, and Risk is reduced. Um, risk is another acronym. Yeah, inside of R. <laughs> yes, it's an acronym inside of an acronym. So ARM yeah. is an acronym, and the R is Risk, and Risk is another acronym. Yes, Risk is Jesus. Reduced Instruction Set Chip. Right, and Chip is an acronym for what? <laughs> and, that's, and that's a backronym. Just for, keep going. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, yeah. So, so reduce the instruction set, right? So you you reduce the instruction set to like only the core things that you have to do, and then they built out from there. So that's why ARM devices have so much better battery life. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of the same thing. If you build something on Android that's supposed to be on your watch, um, you know, it's, it's going to be like an Android phone, time. and all yeah. Android all Android phones run ARM processors already. These are ARM processors just in watches. It's like you already have is the most efficiency that you can hmm. kind of have. But when you build an OS that is only made to be like a very simple smartwatch and you only target it to these specific things, then you can make the battery life way better. I uh, I was, uh, it's reduced instruction set computer. Uh, right. And what does computer stand for? <laughs> anyway, yeah. Oh, it's R-I-S-C? Yeah, risk. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Got computer. it. Which yeah. would still be the case with chip, but I got the C wrong. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, anyway, yeah. yeah, yeah so well, to so. to go back to the question, for me to not consider it to be a bad battery life yeah. and like good, not great. Eight days is great. Yeah, that is what I would go for for every once you you once you use that for a month. You don't want to use everything it else feels terrible. Right. But if I could leave work on Friday and go out for the weekend, say like I'm going on a trip and it's still alive on Sunday when I get back to charge it to go to yeah. bed, that would be two full ideal. days, two good full day, maybe even two and a half. I would two call it, a, I would call it two and a half to where some days it might go a little under, but okay. I would be very yeah. happy with like 2. leaving 5. for a weekend and being able to make, maybe track a hike, forget your then, charger and not yeah. have to worry about it the whole weekend. Yeah, That would be really that's, nice. That's, okay. that's ideal. I'm going to guess that would be the absolute limit of this Watch 5 Pro. Yeah. 60% big. Guess. 590 yeah. million hours? Is that what it is? Right. Yep. 590. That's pretty big. That's It's big, but I'm just saying like okay, it's 60% bigger. Yeah. So, okay, 60% more battery versus the one and a half we already get out of the Watch 4. Then yeah. you're looking at 1.9 days, maybe. Maybe. So, Which is close to what you it's want. close. Yeah. Quick math. Yeah. We'll I see. always I always agree though. Like all of these watches are adding sleep tracking, and everyone keeps talking about how amazing sleep tracking is. Uh, but if I have to charge my watch every night, then I can't use the sleep tracking. And a lot of people say, "Oh, charge it while you're showering." I just googled it real quick. Uh huh. One point six times one point five, because you had one one and a half days, sixty <laughs> percent more. So one point six times. It's yeah. actually two point four. So let's say Plus two point point two point four days. It how does seems that sound? promising. That sounds it pretty. It seems good. promising. Okay. All right. Promising. 2.4. Yeah. I mean, that's like one of my biggest gripes about The other one is that challenges app. (laughs) Let (laughs) Android people count more than just steps. Count calories for Android watches or Google Fit or some connection in there. And the challenges app would be the best app ever. We would recommend it all the time to everybody. You will get free shout outs from us. If you count calories for Android. They're already getting a shout out right now. Wait for shout outs aren't cheap. They're not. Yeah. So there you go. Um, I, oh, wait, wait. Can I say one more thing about the Galaxy Watch, though? Since, yeah. um, does this look familiar to you? <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes, it does. Yeah. I have an argument here, though. The original okay, so thing? no, this is Samsung's it's just rings, three rings. Oh. but it's in a heart instead. So it's pretty much like Apple rings. I think this is better than Apple rings. Oh, why is you it? You know better? why? Because the third ring is is not stand hours, which is yeah. the dumbest metric Same in the world. It's there. it just adds steps to it. It just shows you your steps along with it and gives it as a third. So it's a, it's activity ring as the first it's ring. Calories, calories, time, exercise, exercise and time, steps. and then steps. Oh, nice! Because I like that. standing for one minute every hour it's is dumb. the dumbest metric I ever. And I agree. No one cares. But I think the reason they chose it is because no if you are sedentary and you sit for long extended periods of time. You're That's like bad for you. Muscles. I want. I want to ask yeah. David a question here. I just saw your app say you wanted to stand up. Did you want to stand up and walk around, or did you want to stand up and get the notification away and sit your ass back? But that's down? the point, though. It's gamifying it. It's yeah, gamifying. But, I, it. Yeah. but it's not accomplishing no, no. anything. Sometimes I'm working in a cafe. I think it does. I think just not being seated. <laughs> what is the whole argument for like standing desks? It's like you you spend so much time sitting. And if you sit all day, isn't isn't I think like that's sitting down is bad for you? Yeah, or something? yeah. I think that if you don't stand up and move around a little bit, then you you need to get the blood like flowing around. All yeah, the standing stand up once in a while. Yeah, standing for one minute doesn't accomplish that. But it's better than standing for it's zero minutes. Sure. So I am not advocating for either. Just I, I well, just want you guys to be aware. Over. I'm not going to get involved, but but. Uh, I do think that it's sort of like when you're like, oh, I'm going to do five push-ups. That's it. And then you end up doing 50. Well, I could obviously do that. I don't know where we're going anymore. (laughs) I guess the point is like. The point is that it's getting you moving and then you will probably do more than one minute if you do the one minute. Yeah, Hopefully. Hopefully. Whereas I just wave my arm around. What if it it did you had to do um, (laughs) 100 steps every hour? That'd be kind of hard. That would be really hard. So the thing is, when you get to like that's... fifty minutes on the hour, the app, the watch tells you you gotta stand up. Well, it would give you, you a better left. a better time. That would be nice. I I'm trying to. I don't know how many steps. A hundred steps. Yeah, is. I don't is that like walking around the room 100. once. I bet. I bet from your desk. I bet from your desk to the bathroom <laughs> back to your desk would be about a hundred. A hundred. Actually, maybe it is a hundred. No, that's, that's a long way. It. Like, I would wait I'm there and back. Going up the steps in in my house, it's like twelve steps or whatever. Now I'm like. Oh yeah, so maybe it's ten times that amount of distance. 
Maybe that's maybe that's 100 steps. I, I would think. say going from your desk to the bathroom and back would be 100 steps. I'm going to try it after this podcast. But we do need to take a break. <laughs> <Yeah>. So let's <laughs> and do, do trivia. Yeah, let's do trivia real quick and then come back. Pricing for everything really quick right. since we didn't oh. say any yeah, of yeah. that. Um, it starts at 279 for the Bluetooth only Watch 5 and 329 for the LTE Watch 5. And the Watch 5 Pro only comes in 45 millimeters, so it's a little bigger. But that starts at, remind me, 350? 449. 449. 450. Pretty expensive. 450, 450. for Bluetooth. Okay. 450. And so that's 499 for LTE. 499 for LTE Watch 5 Pro. There you go. Damn. Ellis hit us with the trivia. <laughs> All right, back for Ellis's reign of trivia terror. <laughs> How many bytes are in a kibby bite? <laughs> also pronounced kibba bite. Send it to break. All right, we're back. Um, I have a little game I want to play at the end of this episode before we figure out our trivia answers and how wrong we were because (laughs) Ellis's questions are way too hard. Um, Okay, so we're, like we mentioned, we're getting into like the the start of smartphone season, kind of the start of our busy season. So we've seen quite a few phones get released already and we're about to see the rest of them to the point where we've probably seen a rumor about everyone, right? Like we've seen a Pixel rumors. uh, Well, we've seen seen Pixel 7 pretty much. I feel like we're seeing iPhone rumors. Um, So I thought it'd be fun. I went, you and I did a, um, we guessed the smartphone awards the first episode of this year. I brought those guesses up. I think we're, let's just, Look at them really quick to remind ourselves, and then let's see if we change your mind at all. And you can make some predictions with us now from what we've seen and what we're about to see, and and maybe see if we get any right. We'll check them again in December. See how right we think we are. Yeah. Um, right. Okay. Real quick, and if you guys want to hop in and make mm-hmm. any comments about any of these guesses here, um, I'll just go through them real quick though. Okay. So for best big phone, Marquez guessed the S twenty two Ultra. I guessed the ROG Phone six. For small phone, we both picked the Z Flip. For camera, we both picked the iPhone. Budget value, we both picked the Zenfone 9. Wow. Best think, battery. Wow. Sorry. No. Sorry. Can go continue. Zenfone, okay. Um, um, no. Best battery, iPhone Pro Max for you. I said the Legion Duo 3 just because I made a bad joke that it would have three charging cables. Oh. <laughs> um, which I heard that uh, back and I was like, that used to be funny. That was pretty cool. <laughs> um, design, I had the Find X4. You had the Pixel 7. Oh. Most improved. Uh, we both. Four, it ended up being a five. Because they, oh, yeah, they, they, they don't do four. <laughs> I, I would say that's our fault. For that's, on that, that's on you. That's on me. Sure. That's Pick on me. non existent phone. All right. Um, <laughs> most improved. We both picked the Pixel 7 Pro. Yeah. Um, oh. Okay. This is right. bust of the year. You picked the S21 FE, and I f- wait, forgot. Wait, S21 no. no. F- 22? Oh. No, no, it's right. Oh, that's, ex- no. you, that's exactly you're gonna win. what I did. You're going to win. <laughs> you might win that. You're probably going to win. <laughs> Because no, that could. it was out by the time Man. that we recorded that episode, actually, because it came how, out right in the beginning. Of how the much year. of a downfall would that be from from, from of the year from MVP to, to bust, bust of, of the year? year? There is no like least improved award, but that Just was like, yeah. Oh <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I picked the Razer Three, which doesn't look like it's coming out this year, but and then MVP, you picked S Seven Pro. Pixel, I picked Pixel Seven Pro. Pixel Seven Pro, sorry, and I picked the S Twenty Two. Plus, wow, which seems like boring. a really terrible guess. But wow, yeah, that is a wow. very I've got boring a lot of guess. Thoughts about this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to start from the top then? Yeah. Do you want to yeah. go like over? You want to pick what we sure. are thinking are Should coming I pick up? Pick apart your thoughts. Is that what you I'm... can pick apart thoughts? You can pick oh. what you think is going to come up <laughs> now that what we see. But uh, dissect yeah. our okay. dissect it. <clears throat> um, best big phone. I mean, so I had S twenty two Ultra. Andrew had ROG Phone yeah. six. All I think we are. now have both of those phones are out. Between those, I mean, they're pretty close. The cameras, you give the edge to Samsung. Yeah. The performance, you give the edge to the 165 hertz ROG phone. I, I listened yeah. and I specifically picked the ROG 6 thinking like cameras are the last thing they really need to prove and they would. And 
It's they okay. improved, but they didn't do it like I was expecting. It's was, a step I was down hoping. in camera, but it's yeah. also the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1. They always wait to have the higher end chip in this. So the no, the S22 Ultra still has the oh, 8 yeah. Gen 1, right? I forgot. So that, I think, also leans ROG. I feel like there's going to be more big phones coming out this year, too. Oh, definitely. I We're still going to get well, the big iPhone, the big Fold. The, the big yeah. regular iPhone could really be a good right. big phone because it's yeah. going to be a cheaper version, but big and has right. a, a lot of benefits <laughs> from it. So that's something we were not thinking would happen. Yeah. I think that'll be really interesting. For small, you guys both picked the Z Flip, but I think it's going to be the Zen Phone Yeah, I, th I think, was that Zenfone the thing in nine. the beginning of this episode? You said there's something we'll all agree on. I think I'll, I'll say now that I think Zen Phone 9 is the best small phone and it's not particularly close right now. We could get a great, no, because we're not getting a mini iPhone and we have the Z Flip and we see what it is already. Mm -hmm. I think it's a clear best small phone of the year. So, yeah. For sure. Zenfone yeah. 9. Camera is probably going to swap to the um, Xiaomi 12 Ultra. 12S Ultra? 12S Ultra. Interesting. Right? You know, well, we'll see what the iPhone comes out with. The thing about the camera award, and people always like to dissect my camera award, is it is a versatility award too because you take photos and videos. Mm. And when I looked at photos from the 12S, the ceiling of the best photos it could take was clearly higher than any other smartphone I've ever used. But as far as consistency, it mm. would also constantly churn out photos that were worse than the iPhone. Mm. So if you're ping-ponging back and forth between best and worst, uh, it's kind of a preference thing. Like, do you pick the consistent A or do you pick the one that's an A plus sometimes and clearly has a better, higher ceiling, but sometimes is a B plus? Mm. And then on video time, like iPhone is so consistent. It's so consistently an A to an A plus yeah, as far as smartphone cameras. Really you know, ProRes already like 4K. I, I wish it shot 8K, but even without shooting 8K, it's great videos. And so the Xiaomi also shoots really good videos, but it's not as consistent. So I'm just like, it's hard to not pick the iPhone as the favorite for an incoming video or camera winner, just based on what I've seen from Apple. They could screw it up, mm. but... Mm. What are the odds? That uh, Mi 12S Ultra, though. Those, what about the Pixel 7? Some of those 7? photos were pretty fire. They Pixel were. 7 could be if they freaking fix the processing. <laughs> yeah. I will yeah. beat the drum on this until the day I freaking die mm -hmm. because they got a big old sensor and they're still processing it like it's a tiny one. They did their I magic for it. like five years in a row with that small sensor. <laughs> Yeah. And now that we give them much more capable hardware, they're sort of just leaning back on what they've been doing with the Pixel smaller Pixel 6 hardware. Pro photos look almost exactly the same as Pixel 6a photos. And I feel like that's just a big problem. I, they've dipped the field. Almost reminds me of how we always talk about how Toyota started making like EVs and batteries. And now they're so far behind in the EV game. It feels yeah. like that's yeah, what Pixel's similar. doing. Pixel like they camera. were so good for so long and they're just like are sticking with what they're doing yeah. and now we're behind. Prius, the There's Prius like, of smartphone cameras. Don't you guys love this Sony sensor that we've used for five years? <laughs> yes, in your budget phone. <laughs> yeah. Please. Yeah. Um, we but, have best value and budget also as Zenfone 9. This phone came out at six ninety nine. dollars 99 can it, can it be a, a budget value phone at that price? That's Com a, the comment section <laughs> says no. Comments, I would, yeah, comment section, if I gave it that award, I could immediately see the entire comment section blowing up and saying six ninety nine cannot be a good best budget award. I think but we, I think it's value award. I think the we values. tried to make that award both ends of that. It's like yeah. budget or bang for your buck. Kind bang for your buck. Like, pound yeah. for pound. It does yeah. have the best processor out there for... And it has a really nice 100, 120 hertz display. Very pretty fast. cool cameras. The gimbal camera. Excellent it's battery. small, really good battery. I mean, yeah, value-wise, I could see it inching into there, but I definitely know that people will disagree with if If that was phone budget. was five ninety nine, I'd, I'd hand it yeah. to them right now. Yeah. But six ninety nine, It's $100 more than it was last year. Right. So there is that. Right. Yeah. So we're going to get some other phones that are like very extra budget. You know, we have the 6A, we have the SC, we have phones that are hanging around three, four, five hundred dollars that are always going to be options there. So I don't know if it's a clear winner yet. I don't mm -hmm. think we can say we have a winner for best budget, but I do love the Zenfone 9 at the price anyway. It is what it is. Um, it's kind of funny that we saw into the future for the Zenfone. 
Yeah. This is a January I'm prediction. Happy. That's, that's kind of sick. Is, no this is the code. first week in January. That's that a, I'm kind of kind of happy yeah. with that prediction. They've been pretty solid devices. That's, for I the think last that's what we figured. Though. It's like every yeah. year they surprise us. We're like, oh wow, Aces is good. Oh wait, we said the same thing last year. <laughs> they in yeah. the bracket yeah. every year. I think they go to at they, least quarters, possibly semis. Yes, every year. iPhone has never. <laughs> one in the first round. Zenfone wow. has never lost in the first wow. round. No, I think iPhone won first round. It finally this year. in the last yeah, one. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. But the um, Zenfone always is. Yeah, yeah. always. It's always gone really well. Okay. So we did have most improved. We both picked Pixel 7 Pro, I think is interesting. Um, we have yet to technically hold and use that phone, but we kind of see what's coming, which is similar to the well, last phone. The reason, though, it's <laughs> most improved is because how bad the experience was on yeah. the 6 yeah. Pro. So, like, that's what they need to work on. It's hard to tell that from the design things we're seeing I mean, now. the fit and finish would be nice, too. Because it, w- it would be. It yeah. did sort of feel like they just glued parts together with the 6 Pro. Do you know what I really liked about the 6A is that the lip was not as protruded. It's because I, of the smaller sensor. I liked that. I wish somehow they could get that into yeah, it. Yeah, they but can't physically do it. Well, <laughs> they can't yeah. physically do it. Here's another way of phrasing that. Is there something else you would pick as most improved right now over the Pixel 7 or 7 Pro? Like, I'm like Zenfone, but then the 8 was actually pretty good too. The 8 was good, but like the 9 <laughs> yeah. was, that's really the first good. thing I thought of as well. Yeah. The, the Zenfone, Zenfone is sound. like, it really killed it this year. Obviously um, the Legion Duo too. <laughs> only I, um, two charging cables in terms of if you want to take one step we didn't talk about design Zenfone could possibly be in design and I think the biggest thing taking away from it is how messed up the paint gets on the back I can't give it yeah it, it that's, gets pretty beat up I think that's a yeah, big issue you I had that for like week. four days and it looked yeah. like you had it for four years dude I- Two weeks into using the phone, it looked like I had it for literally like a lifetime. Yeah. yeah. It's very easily yeah. scuffed. A friend of mine had the black one and all the logos and like Asus lettering were gone after four days. They yeah. literally wiped that's it off. four days. Finger oil. Dude, it's going to look <laughs> crazy yeah. in a year. Yeah. Yeah. Which maybe so, that's cool. I like the design. It's, yeah. a, it's a patina. Yeah. I would like I to know. keep an eye on in a year, like what people using the Zen phone every day, what those phones look like. Yeah. Because I, I mean, be cool. maybe they'll put a case on it. Like I don't, I, I use my phone out of a case. Yes, I'm a psycho. I get it. But hey, some people are going to do that. What's that phone going to look like in a year? Yeah. I want to know. Maybe you can just scrub it off with a toothbrush. That's actually, I didn't try cleaning it. I mean, I, I got the microfiber. I tried like getting the scuff off of it or whatever, but maybe there's some crazy do, hack out there. Do you remember that? Well, rem- there's a pixel that everyone said got messed up on the back. Yeah, and then everyone's like, oh no, you can just scrub it off with a toothbrush and it's fine. And it worked. It, it worked, but it was also yeah. like the dumbest thing to tell somebody. It's kind of insane. <laughs> like you have an extra toothbrush, right? It's always you're, you're pic- it for your you're, phone. Your <laughs> pixel <laughs> toothbrush. I, mean, I would. Yeah. Man. Well, design, I think we're both going to find our answers are incorrect there. Find X4 doesn't exist because they skipped straight to the X5. Sorry, but Andrew. The X5 is a really pretty phone. The X5 is a nice it phone. Is. We've got one. I think I, I like the X3 better, though. Really? I do, too, The actually. look of it, yeah. Oh, yeah. I think I like the X3 better. Right. But I picked Pixel 7, and I, I almost guarantee that doesn't win the design award. So it what is what it is. What about Find N? Uh, I like that. Um, I, I like think that, that is, design a lot. I think there's I a do. lot of design award candidates, as there usually are. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's sort of an that's one of the more subjective mm-hmm. awards. Yeah, definitely. Um, I like the Zen phone design, but I can't give it a design award. Yeah, so it is what it is. Yeah, bust of the year. Yeah, you picked the Razer Three. That's like kind of a funny one because it's not coming to the U.S. and it could be a super bust. This also, year. the OnePlus, uh, n- what is it? Ten uh, T, kind oh, yeah. of flopped. When I wrote this out, I was like, I'm pretty sure everyone's gonna say Ten T. Ten T is a pretty popular bust pick. I'm pretty sure that mm. would get a lot of votes if we put it to fan vote. Yeah, a lot of disappointment in that phone. Um, S21 FE being my pick for bust of the year. That's a good pick. It's pretty, a pretty good. It's a pick. really good pick. It's a pretty I'm, good pick. Big brain pick right there. Yeah. Uh, and then MVP. My MVP. Wow, I was really high on Pixels. Okay, Pixel 7 Pro was my MVP pick, and S22 Plus was your MVP pick. Do you remember your logic behind S22 Plus as MVP? I, sort of an all-around champ you know, at a good price. I want to say it was similar to that and being worried about what was going to happen to the Ultra with the impending note disappearing and, like, Oh, not being exactly sure what was going to happen with mm. it. And if they tried to do like too much similar to like, remember when S20 Ultra first came out and that was terrible because they tried to do a million things with it. Then they refined it. Then I was worried it was going to go back on the route of doing a million things with it by adding S Pen and everything. And it didn't really. 
It's yeah. definitely not that great. Like, it's not anything incredible. You could argue the S22 Plus has a better design than the S22 Ultra, and I therefore is the better of agree. those. I think uh, I'll say two things. One, I think it's probably going to go to an 8 Plus Gen 1 phone because of how good that chip is. But the other thing I'm going to say is, and this is never going to happen, but if it did, it would be great if Apple put a 120 hertz ProMotion display in the big, cheap iPhone. That could be an MVP. Hmm. That could in be the really cool. 14 Max or whatever it ends well, up being. And what mm-hmm. pricing is on that? Yeah, will be very exactly. interesting. Yeah, but I, they're probably not doing that, which sucks. Yeah, it's if it's not a pro phone that they're not going to put a promotion. Yeah. I think they're keeping all the pro names to the pro device. What, what if they just do idea. nice that motion? That means that do nice motion, <laughs> <laughs> pretty good motion. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Apple's going to keep. 60 hertz on the regular, the cheaper iPhones Probably. until brutal. The it's day. brutal because cheaper yeah. is still seven hundred dollars <laughs> yeah. for a 60 hertz phone. Yeah, that's insane. The budget iPhone, the budget. <laughs> Best just budget. get the SE at that point. <laughs> Actually, just get the SE. Yeah, just get the SE at that point. Yeah. Anyway. Oh, I have to say, I went to a Pink Floyd tribute band concert the other night. And the amount of iPhone 8s and iPhone SEs I saw was unreal because everyone was over 65. That's so funny. And it was wild. That's, I feel like a couple years ago, it was the 6 that was everywhere, which yeah. makes sense. It's yeah. sort of a graduation of, of a flow of phones when people upgrade. And the 6 and 6S are the best-selling iPhones ever, hmm. I think. Um, so those people finally upgraded. We got the iPhone 10 big upgrade cycle with the OLED iPhones. There's a lot of 8s out there. Yeah. I think it was just a testament to people that wanted to keep the home button. Yeah. And because the the lady that was sitting next to me was like 80 years old and I saw her texting and she had like her texting size on max and everything was on max. Oh, that's such a... It's like one line (laughs) max. My mom does this too where like every letter she would type would be like, <laughs> take one letter at a time. <laughs> just like yeah, yeah. I love seeing the iPhone eight with the massive font size. Yeah, <laughs> font yeah. Size. that's such a great. great. Such that's a such a grandma vibe. I love that. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think we'll yeah. leave it at that. We'll continue to see what phones come out this year. But like we said, it's the beginning of busy season. Yeah. August. We that's kind of like you hit the calendar and you go. All right. Yeah. This is it. We're gonna get a bunch of stuff. I can so. feel it this week because we're working on two long form episodes at the same time, and we haven't had as much time to work on them we're being rushed around to all these other things yeah a lot going on yeah so i say stay tuned stay tuned for all that because that's going to turn into more videos for you so you're welcome um (laughs) but (laughs) that's all going to be uh fun to keep track of so we'll see how well our predictions turn out in the very end uh let's end it with our trivia way too hard trivia part three way too hard for someone yeah i don't i don't know if i'm gonna get any points this week (laughs) Ellis. All right. So the first question was, who owns ARM? And with only two points, I believe David gets to answer first. Oh, I have my guess. If, if I get it right, did they not get to guess? Yeah. Uh, sh- should I say if you get it right? I feel like I should no, just keep my I don't lips. know. We I think just you keep... answer first, yeah. but you don't uh, tell us if he's right or not. Exactly. And then the second most can submit a guess, and then the, the top can submit a yeah. guess. But I, I only have one there, guess. There is so. the thing. David said he thinks he's right, so... We, yeah, we could very easily I should have been just like, guess hmm, what he's saying. But anyways, I, I have my guess locked in my head that I'm probably wrong. We're, uh, we're working with a channel partner right now on the eventual yes. solution. The white more solution. Updates. That's a great That's idea. That's actually a really good idea. So okay. I guess we could. This might that. be the last archaic version. Sorry for yeah. the chaos. But uh, what is your. Yeah, give it a couple we'll, weeks. We'll see. We're still getting the final. <laughs> sure. Final made. Uh, okay. Yeah. The points don't matter. All right. <laughs> All right. Um, SoftBank. Anyone well, else? That's not I, what I was going to I was going to just say IBM. I was going to say AMD. So what's the answer? The answer is SoftBank. There it Got is. him. All right. Very nice. <laughs> SoftBank <laughs> owns ARM. I don't yeah. even know what SoftBank is. I've never heard <laughs> Soft of it. SoftBank's a megacorp. They're mega, mega, sure. They make mega the, the robot. <clears throat> They're also a bank. The Everyone Soft- has a robot. Yeah, but SoftBank. Yeah, I guess everyone does have a robot. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. The SoftBank robot has a funny Yendai name. Yendai has a robot. Oh. Yeah. It, this robot looks like. Every robot on the CS floor. Is it that, that, is, that looks like every robot this is, on the CES. This, oh, no. this is what what hall is that at CES? It's every just single this one. South Hall. This, South hall. hall. this is South Hall, right? This yeah. is it just, looks like a bigger Robo Sapien. <laughs> Wait, did Robo Sapien make the or did SoftBank make the Robo Sapien? Oh, it's called Do you remember Pepper? the Robo Sapien? No, I'm, I'm Oh no, a, that one's called Now, it says. Oh. Like now six. Oh. 
Now that's what I call a creepy robot six. <laughs> oh God, we've gone so sidetracked. Okay. Uh, All right. Yeah. Question number two. <laughs> How many bytes are in a kibibyte? Go ahead. Wait, yeah. I have to guess again? First. I think technically you still have oh. less points than Andrew. So yeah, <sighs> kibibyte. Kiba, it sounds small. It's K-I-B-I. If that helps. Kibby, oh. Kibby bite. Kibby bite. But it's Kibba. Kibba. Uh, I've heard it said both ways. Oh. How many bytes total? Mm hmm. Jeez. Are in one Kibby bite. Not how many bits. All right. How many bytes? Oh, God. I know that what changes a, everything. I know what, what is, a gigabyte is. Mm -hmm. I know what a terabyte is. I know what a megabyte is. I know what a kilobyte is. I'm going to go under kilobyte. That's all I know. Kilobyte is 1,024 bytes, right? I just feel like it's got to be bigger than terabyte I because... Bigger? I would going over bigger. the top? Because if... Interesting. If it was small... Like, we use all of these common byte variables together, these, mul mul like, versions of bytes multiplied, and we use them often. We use byte, kilobyte, megabyte, gigabyte, terabyte. But back in the day... Very often... This could either be a current term referring to like larger than a terabyte or yeah. old terminology referring to somewhere between a kilobyte and a couple hundred bytes. Oh, or you ready for the wrench? This sure. term was coined in 1992. I think it's like, a, I think it's 128 bytes or something somewhere in there. That's my guess. Mark has, That's my guess. Mark has so puts confused. in 128. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Andrew? I'm just... I, I'm going to go higher. I like I I'm with you. It's we have all these commonly used terms and we keep having those terms because we're hitting a max where it's starting to get really confusing. Yeah. So we're adding another to it. So I'm going to guess whatever over a terabyte is. So it would be a terabyte times a thousand, right? It's like trillions yeah. of bytes now. This I was going to say a terabyte time, 10 terabytes is my guess. But it's, right. this is in the 90s, though. How would they even? Because he said it was coined. So maybe there was a book where he was like, in order to have an AI that is completely susceptible, like can, can be just like humans, it would have to be one kibabyte. <laughs> What's your final guess? <laughs> what is your final 10 guess? 10 terabytes is my final guess. My, How many bytes is that? One E to the oh. 15. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, we're so wrong, Andrew. <laughs> All right. <we're> so <laughs> yeah. 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 Like, 100 trillion bytes or something? I'm, I'm ending this right now. <laughs> <That's> crazy. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> here, here's what a kibibyte is. Here we go. Here oh, we go. Here we All go. Right. go. Okay. All right. So <clears throat> computers work yes. with base two. Uh -huh. All the time. Yeah. Right. Hard drive manufacturers, for whatever reason or, or another, like to measure their hard drives in base 10. Mm -hmm. Why? I don't know. You'll have to ask a hard drive manufacturer. But Marquez, when you said a kilobyte is 10 and 24 bytes, that's both true and not true. But until the <laughs> 90s, if you asked a hard drive manufacturer, a kilobyte mm. would be a clean 1,000 bytes. God. And if you asked a computer manufacturer, a is kilobyte 10, would, would be 124 or 1024. Until the fall of the Roman Empire, right. the 10th <laughs> month was December. So those 24 bytes don't seem like a big deal <laughs> until you're working with terabyte-sized drives, right? Because now, all of a sudden, when you're buying what's advertised as a two-terabyte drive, but it's actually you're losing 24 bytes per kilobyte, right. you're actually only losing 180 gigabytes of storage. So in 1992, some very smart people came up with the term kibibyte, which accurately refers to 1,024 bytes, saving kilobyte oh, for the clean 1,000. 1, and nobody uses it. Oh, <laughs> that's hilarious. Wow. Yeah, so it was invented to make things clearer, and no one adopted it. And so now a kilobyte can still kind of mean either or. That mm. is really cool. But Learned that's something. why when wow. you buy a 2 terabyte drive and it reads as 1.82 terabytes... You don't it's have because all. they're not tebibytes. Exactly. <laughs> that's an, okay. Well, that's a fun fact. Yeah. yeah right. That is kind oh, of, I feel fun right now. Sounds very uh, human. To we're make all super better. wrong, but I feel like we learned something today. Yeah. Yeah. Next that's week, a win. 
Adam will be back. And, yeah. Uh, and my book gets some right. <laughs> we won't learn anything. We won't learn anything. The more Andrew Spell and Google. Were, yeah. The more Andrew and I were going down that rabbit hole, I was like, wait, no. We're I think the minute wrong. you saw me calculating on here, <laughs> you're like. When I saw one E to the 15, yeah. I was like, we're so wrong. 127 was a good guess because it's a, or 128 is a good guess because it's a clean seven bit number. Yeah. Um, yeah. Somewhere yeah. in the. That's what he was going for. Well, I was going for underneath 1024, somewhere in the, like in the 90s where they were like, oh. Your hard drive has finally reached this crazy 128 number. What are we going to call yeah. it? We need an advertising term, but yeah. I was, you know, whatever. I yeah. thought it was going to be like an like a theoretical. This is what an artificial general intelligence no. would take up on a on a platter. <laughs> and they're, I don't know. They're, I don't know. They're really know. they're cute you know. sounding. They go up all the way. There's a tebabyte and a gibabyte and a yeah. mebabyte. There's all of them. Gibabyte. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Next. <laughs> Next. <laughs> Final trivia. Oh, that was the only two. No, that's it. Oh, that was it. I, okay. I, I'll okay. give you a third one if you want. Oh, but no, that, I mean, I mean, considering how many zeros we just got. I think this episode's over. <laughs> yeah, I think we've we reached the end of this week's episode. I feel like this happens every week. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. Descendant to Matt. Thanks for listening to Waveform. It's been a fun week. Welcome to smartphone season. I'll see you in the next one. Peace. You know, David, you did the call out when I was gone. Do you think you could do it again on the spot right now? Yeah. Do it. Don't um, mess up. Okay. I'll fix it if you So don't. when I say produced by this week, it's still say, produced by Adam. You can say yeah. both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For a little, you know. <laughs> Pour one out. <laughs> <laughs> he was a good guy. Okay. <clears throat> um, so it starts with Waveform and it's produced by, right? All right, ready? I don't know. One take wonder. Waveform is produced by Adam Molina and Ellis Roven. Our intro outro music is by, I skipped the whole thing. It was supposed to be the, <laughs> it was supposed to be the Vox thing at the beginning, right? I right. usually do it. Yeah. So we are. You also Waveform. don't, I can do it too. I was no. just trying to put you on the spot. Waveform yeah. is, is produced by, pr- no. Waveform is produced by Adam Molina uh, and Ellis Roven. We are, we are partnered with Vox partnered. Media Podcast. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Like I say, I'm just <clears throat> making sure I'm respected around here. Respect. Okay. Waveform. Yeah. Same. You yeah. sounded like you sounded like Yoshi. <laughs> it sounded like you just reversed the record player. <laughs> Waveform by the way. Okay. <clears throat> Waveform is produced by Adam Molina and Ellis Robin. We are part of the Vox Media Podcast Network, and our intro outro music is by Vane. Still. Well played. Great well job. Played.